All right, <clears throat> so let's look at this one. Uh, crankshaft AB turns with a clockwise angular velocity of 20 radians per second, uh, down to your angular acceleration of 20 radians per second squared. Uh, determine the acceleration of the piston at the instant AB is in the position shown. At this instant, the <clears throat> angular velocity of AB is 10 radians per second. And now this, this term right here, they didn't have to give that to us. Uh, we could have calculated that to be 2.43. I think we actually did uh, do this problem before. Um, I think we used instantaneous center, uh, instantaneous center way over here to find that <clears throat> angular velocity. All right, so we could have found that angular velocity. Uh, they were nice enough to give it to us. So since they gave it to us, uh, we can start right away with our acceleration. Uh, we only have one method, the relative acceleration method to say AC equals AB plus AC slash B in this relative term is alpha cross R minus omega squared times R C slash B, CB, C slash B, CB. <clears throat> and so that 2.43 uh, they gave us right there. Uh, and so we can use this. Now, why would we use this method? You, you see that we're using this method for bar BC. Uh, so CB, CB, CB. Uh, because bar BC is not in pure rotation. If something was in pure rotation, it would be overkill to try to use the relative acceleration method. Um, but bar BC is not in pure rotation. We, we need a good method. And relative acceleration method is the one that we are going to use. Now, uh, next thing I like to do is kind of look at Point B and look at point C. Do I know anything about these points? <clears throat> Do I know anything about these points? Point C, uh, lucky, linear. Point C is just linear. I know that its acceleration is just along that slot. Uh, I'll say in the positive J direction. <clears throat> point B, ah, uh, not so long. Point B is normal tangential. So let's kind of take a side note. Uh, let me do this maybe in blue. Side note. And let's find AB. Not by looking at bar BC, but let's find it by looking at bar AB. So uh, by looking at bar AB, let's find AB normal and AB tangential. All right, AB normal <coughs> is either V squared over R or R omega squared. Now this is, uh, again, I'm looking at bar AB. This is R of bar AB, 0.25, times omega 10 squared. Uh, so this is 25. But what direction is it? I need I's and J's before I plug it in up here. Um, is it completely in the I? Is it completely in the J? Ah, well, we, we are looking. We've got a 45 degree angle. Uh, but it is both. All right, A normal is into the curve. Uh, so this would be looking at point B into the curve right here. And so this is 45 degrees. So let's see, 25 <coughs> sine 45 in the I, right? I'm breaking this pink vector into its two components and that right there would be 25 sine 45. And then this right here would be down 25 cosine 45 <coughs> in the J. So there is my, uh, you know, and if you do like I like to do, I'll, I'll go ahead and give me a couple of decimal places, but 17.7 I my 17.7 J. All right, now AB tangential is R alpha. I'm still looking at our AB. This is R AB, alpha of AB. So this is 0.25 times 20. This is, magnitude is five, but what direction is it? tangential. If this is going 20 clockwise, then my vector right here would be 5, but let me break it up into its two components. All right, <clears throat> 45 degrees, it, it, you, you can't mess this up, but any other angle than 45 degrees, we've got to be very, very careful. Uh, this is 45 degrees, uh, that's for that line. That green line is 45 degrees from vertical, so my tangential acceleration uh, would be 45 degrees from horizontal. And so I'll be real care careful and say five uh, cosine 45 in the I and up five, sorry, sine 45. Five, where are we here? 
45, sine 45 in the J. <clears throat> I might like to just go ahead and 3.54 in the I, 3.54 in the J. <clears throat> all right, so one, two, three. I, you can go ahead and combine the I's and J's, but all four of those go into that one little term right there in our relative acceleration problem. All right? Okay, so now I think I am ready to plug things in as much as I can. Let me go ahead and do this R. Uh, <coughs> R, R, R. So since I did C, B, C slash B, this is from B to C, from B to C. From B to C would be 0.75, let's see, 13. So sine of 13.6 in the I and up 0.75 cosine 13.6 in the J, uh, that turns out to be 0.177 in the I plus 0.729 in the J. So that's going to be the R for both that term <coughs> and that term. Okay, now I think I'm ready to plug in. Let, let's look at back at the, the heart of our problem. AC equals AB plus AC slash B. Me rewrite AC slash B as alpha cross R minus omega squared times R. <clears throat> this would be AC. I don't know it, but I know all of it. AC, all of it is in the J direction. And that's all I have on the left-hand side of my equation. On the right-hand side of my equation, that AB is 17.7 I minus 17.7 J, 3.54 I, 3.54 J. That was only that term right there. And now plus alpha. Alpha CB, I don't know, and generally that, that's, the, that's what it's asking for. That's one of the main things we're looking for. <clears throat> but I know it's in the K direction. Why? Because this is a two-dimensional problem. If all of my um, bars and velocities are in the um, XY plane, then my angular is in the K. It could be positive K, which is counterclockwise. It could be negative K, which would be clockwise. I'm guessing counter positive K, counterclockwise. All right, so cross with 0.177i plus 0.729j minus omega squared. That was that 2.43 squared. So make sure for this omega that's inside of this uh, relative term, make sure that's the omega for CB. That's the 2.43, not this 10. Don't plug in that 10 right there. <clears throat> and then times 0.177i plus 0.729j. J. So there's my equation. That I mean, if you can get that, that is a, that's the the cornerstone of our problem. That's the main equation. Uh, you can get that right, then you're you're good. You're halfway there. Now it's just math. Now it's just math. <clears throat> it's okay that you have two unknowns right there. In fact, you're probably going to have two unknowns, <clears throat> not three unknowns, but two unknowns because you can solve your I equation and your J equation, your I equation. Nothing on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, what is what is in front of the I? 17.7 is in front of the I. 3.54 is in front of the I. Okay, how about here and here? Which one of those is going to end up in my I equation? Uh, it's gonna be this one, because when I do that cross product, K cross J, then, then I, you know, the result is the perpendicular to both K and the J. The result is in the I. <clears throat> so, 0.729 alpha, but positive or negative? K cross J is negative, and there are no other negatives anywhere else. Uh, so negative 0.729 alpha. All right, now, uh, which one of these is going to end up in the I? Uh, well, this is not a cross product. It is just multiplication. So whichever one is in, in the I to begin with, that's the one in the I. So negative 0.243 squared times 0 0.177. Uh, I think I've got that. Yeah, so it's just a number. 1.05. So 1.05 right there. And hey, if that one equation has one unknown, go ahead and solve. So I've got alpha of BC 27.7 radians per second squared. It came out positive, which means I guessed correctly. What did I guess? I guessed positive K. I guessed counterclockwise. And so it was correct. Now that my J equation, AC, and then what's in front of the J on the right-hand side of my equation, 
<coughs> sorry, negative 17.7, positive 3.54. All right, which one of these is going to end up in the J? This one right here, 0.177 alpha. And <coughs> positive or negative, K cross I is positive J. Now, which one of these, the one that's already in the J direction, negative 2, 2.43 squared times 0.729, I've got that number, negative 4.30, 4.30, all right, and then plug in 27.7 right there, <coughs> AC, negative 13.5 feet per second squared. What does that negative mean? I mean, it means I guess the wrong way. I guessed it was in the positive J. I guessed that it was accelerating up uh, but in this case, I guess it's accelerating down right there. The direction of that acceleration, sorry, not the direction, but the positive or negative of that acceleration is going to be hard. I, I don't know if you can guess that correctly. Uh, there's no good way to visualize that um, as opposed to velocity of directions. Uh, but I did know that it was, it was confined along that slot, and it was linear. Uh, it was linear, so I didn't have to worry about any other directions. It was just up or down. Uh, so it turns out it was down 13.5 feet per second squared.